Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be talking about one of the most annoying types of questions that comes up on the SAT and ACT. Can I get a drum roll please? Completing the square as you probably already guessed from the title, but got to do a drum roll anyways, of course. So completing the square questions, they can be a bit of a hassle, a little bit annoying. I get a lot of complaints from students about these types of questions, but I'm hoping with the tips and tricks that we talk about in this video, you will be on your way to be a completing the square expert in no time. So without further ado, let's get into completing the square. So before we can really understand what it means to complete the square, we first have to understand the equation of a circle and how everything is formatted. So the equation of a circle, this will not be provided for you in the formula section of the SAT or the ACT for that matter. So you need to have this memorized 100%. So the formula is as follows. So we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And we can see that h comma k represents the center of the circle and r represents the radius of the circle. So hypothetically speaking, if we were told that the center of a circle, I don't know, let's say it was negative five comma eight, and that the radius of this circle was, let's say, three, we would plug it in as follows. So we would do x minus negative five squared plus y minus eight squared is equal to three squared. So simplifying this, this becomes x plus five squared plus y minus eight squared is equal to nine. So why are we talking about squares if this is supposedly about circles? So this has nothing to do with like a square as in like a square, like the geometrical shape square. So we're not talking about this type of square. We're talking about the type of square that we mean when we're talking about an exponent, like x squared, for example. That's what we're talking about when we mean square. So let's talk about how to go from the trinomial version to the squared version. So if you have x squared plus 6x plus 9, alternatively, that can be written as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if that makes sense, you want to think about the foiling of that right here. So when you foil, you would get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, which becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9, which is exactly what we already have right here. And we know x plus three times x plus three is alternatively written as x plus three squared. Same thing as when you have x times x, you can alternatively rewrite that as x squared. And it's the same thing, it doesn't matter what the variable is. The variable could be x, y, chicken nugget, whatever it wants to be. So it's the same thing if you have the y variable. If we have a trinomial here with the y variable, Again, if we were to FOIL this, you would see that it's the same thing as y squared minus 8y plus 16. You would get y squared minus 4y minus 4y plus 16. So y squared minus 8y plus 16. So again, this can alternatively, as we said, be rewritten as y minus 4 squared because it's just each of these terms being multiplied by each other. So that's how we go from the trinomial version to the squared version. All right, so now let's actually talk about the procedure that we're going to follow when we encounter one of these completing the square questions on the SAT or the ACT. So right now, if you notice, they're asking us the equation of a circle is shown above. What is the radius of the circle? So we know that the radius in the equation of a circle comes over here. It's in its squared form. But right now, this looks nothing like the equation of a circle that we were talking about originally in this video. So we need to do some manipulation in order to get what we have right here to look like what we want all the way up here. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the first thing that we want to ensure that we're doing is grouping the x's together and grouping the y's together. Because if you notice, they have x's and y's kind of interspersed over here. We want to put all the x's in one part and put all the y's in the other part. So we have x squared plus 4x. So I put all the x's over here. I'm going to put all the y's over here. And then I just have the negative one that was already part of the equation. So speaking of the fact though, guys, that this is in yellow <laughs> and pink right up here, can anyone tell me in the comments below what TV show, hint, it's a child TV show, it's a children's uh, TV show. 
yellow, pink, you do care. Best show ever was the hallmark of my entire childhood. Okay, so anyways, back to the problem without the TV references. So we're gonna group the X's and group the Y's together. So what we have to do next is fill in the missing term of the trinomial. So when we talked on the previous page about trinomials, you could see that there's like an X squared term, there's an X term, and then there's a number. Same thing when it's with the Y variable, Y squared, then there's a Y term, and then there's a number at the end. But as for right now, we only have the X squared and the X term and the Y squared and the Y term. We don't have the number associated, the blank spot with either of these two trinomials. So here's how we're going to find what that number is. So we take the number that's highlighted. Let's start with X first, the four. We're gonna take the four. Step one is to divide that by two. We end up getting two, and then we square that number to give us four. So we're gonna take four and go ahead and plug that in up here. We're gonna add four, and let's do the same thing for the Y. So we take the number that's in front of the Y term, so negative two, we divide that by two to get negative one, and again, we square that to get one. So we're gonna take that one and go ahead and plug that up here as positive one. And what we need to remember, guys, is that whenever we do something to one side of the equation, we have to do that to the other side as well in order to keep the equation balanced. So because I added a four and a one, I need to do that to the other side of the equation as well. All right, so those are the first two steps here. So now step three is going to involve writing this in a way that represents the equation of a circle. So write as equation of circle. Okay, so x squared plus 4x plus 4, we can alternatively rewrite that as x plus 2 squared. And if you're wondering where I got the 2 from, the number that you're going to write in here is actually always the same as this number that you get by dividing the 4 by 2 before you actually square it. So we get x plus 2 squared, and let's do the same thing for the y. We get y, and we could see the number when we divided the negative two here by two give us negative one before we squared it. We're gonna do y minus one squared again. And then that is going to be equal to negative one plus four plus one, so that's five minus one, so that's equal to four. So now we actually have it as the equation of a circle. So they ask us now for the radius, and we know that the four corresponds with the equation of a circle as r squared. So if r squared is equal to four, taking the square root, we know that r is equal to two, so our answer here is choice A. All right, so now let's try this on a question that instead of the radius is asking us for the center of the circle. So again, we said step one was to group the X's and group the Y's. Well, in this particular equation, thank you to the SAT, the College Board, they were kind enough to already group them for us. So I'm just gonna write this down again here. So we have X squared plus 20X. Again, we wanna leave a blank spot there, plus Y squared plus 16Y, leave a blank spot is equal to negative 20. And the next step we said was to fill in the missing term of the trinomial. So again, we take the number that's in front of the X, so that's going to here be 20. We're gonna take 20, we're going to divide that by two, we get 10, and then we're going to square 10 to get 100. So we're going to take 100 and plug that in right here, so plus 100, and do the same thing for the Y. So we have 16y, that's the number right here in front of the y. So we take 16, we divide that by two, we get eight, we're gonna square that eight, and then we're going to get 64. So we're gonna take the 64, plug that in right here, so plus 64. And as we said, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we gotta do to the other side so that it's balanced. So we're going to add 100 and add 64 over here. Okay, so now that we have our terms filled in, we wanna write this as the equation of a circle. So we can do that, again, let's go ahead and write that. We're going to get x plus, again, it's always this number before we square it, x plus 10 squared 
plus y plus this number before we square it, eight squared is equal to, let's see, so that's 80 plus 64 in the end. So 80 plus 64, mental math, Jackie, is what, 144. All right, but they're asking us for the center of the circle. And what we need to remember is that the center of the circle is always written as x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So in order to get a positive number to appear in either of these terms right here, we would need the center to have a negative term because then we would get a double negative. So notice if we did x minus negative 10, squared plus y minus negative eight squared equals 144, that would be enough to give us the x plus 10 because negative negative is positive. So that would be the same thing as x plus 10 squared plus y plus eight squared is equal to 144. So the center then we know is negative 10 comma negative eight, which is choice B. Alrighty guys, so if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe this video. Also follow me over on TikTok. The handle is test prep tips. Let's drop that over here, future Jackie. And guys, leave any recommendations for future videos that you have in the comments. I'm always looking for more ideas and I would love to accommodate some of your requests. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and successfully learned how to complete the square. 